And I imagine my guess is that the rigid pattern is one of yours because the feeling is that they're so good at living in their head and solving problems and figuring it out and tackling that to-do list and accomplishing and being the best. Yeah. There's no heart connection. It's rules. The right way and wrong way and stay in this box, stay in this lane, do this. Sure. Do this yeah. Way. Irrational and, and my wife would probably agree. <laughs> If you can break down what did change through the Aya ceremonies, I'm about to do my first one in September. Uh, what changed, and then why did some things not change? What was the aha of why certain things were not changing from the Aya experience? I think what changed was the experience of having somatic releases mm -hmm. instead of just coming from years of processing with the mind. I was actually yeah. now processing with the body, but under medicine, it was just, you feel so safe with Aya yeah. that it just allows your nervous system to discharge whatever you've been holding on to. Well, I think this is where it's so important to tie in the mind. That's why I say mindset work is very valuable. So is thematic work working cohesively together because it was nine months later that I met my mentor, who was a body mind psychologist. And it was working with him that I start that I completed the missing piece of understanding that, okay, great. You had all these ceremonies where you grieved and you purged all this stuff and it felt amazing afterwards, no. maybe not during, but it felt amazing afterwards, but yet you didn't know what it was tied to. You didn't know the beliefs, the limiting beliefs that you had. So what never shifted was my unconscious beliefs and your beliefs create your behavior. So I attracted the same type of guy again, say, who <laughs> actually, who I met at an ayahuasca ceremony. So you could say, <laughs> yeah. ironic. and it was that relationship that finally led me to my mentor. So you could say I led me to my healing just, uh, you know, indirectly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, well, and was it those experiences though on Aya where you're having, having the somatic release that you're like, oh, the healing pathway is through the body, not just through the mind and not like, because we think of like, you know, talk therapy is going to heal us, but it really doesn't except for light anxiety or light cases. It, you know, even Vessel Vandercoat talks about and body keeps the score that CBT does more harm than good for extreme cases of trauma and PTSD. Um, exactly. Because you're only trimming weeds. You're never yeah. re getting to the root of it, a hundred percent. I think it was really the work with with my mentor. It was yeah. delving into, on a conscious level, understanding your inner landscape, mm -hmm. and and knowing that you could do it without the medicine. That you can learn how to move your own energy, and uncover what the beliefs are that are there, and rewire those beliefs. It was having to do that for myself, like mm -hmm. with his guide, of course, it was showing up for myself every week and being willing to do the work and look at myself, which I know it takes time, but I was in that much pain and discomfort that I was willing to do it, that I feel laid down a new foundation for myself. I realized mm -hmm. that transformation isn't always a walk in the park on a beautiful sunny day where it's just like aha moments and this mm -hmm. feels great that it's uh that there's dragons to slay and that means that at times like i have to show up for me i gotta double down in this um as much as there could be help of plant medicine so like i'm a fan of plant medicine for sure i'm actually sitting in a ceremony in a couple of weeks myself in pasadena not ayahuasca um i'm but I'm a fan of it. Like when my clients or people say to me, should I do this? I always say, well, you should never do it. <laughs> Only if it calls to you. Mm -hmm. But if you know yourself, if you know your inner landscape, meaning you know your beliefs, you know what you learned from mom and dad and like what you inherited in that way. And you've learned how to regulate your nervous system and be in your body 
and you've experienced actually moving your own energy, then you go into a ceremony and it's you're working with the medicine mm -hmm. as opposed to needing the medicine to heal you. You're now able to go so much deeper because of that, because you've trained yourself for it. I've had multiple clients over the years say to me after they go through my 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 sessions they're like this is ayahuasca without the ayahuasca I'm like mm -hmm. and so learning that we are the medicine and that's just a tool in the healer's tool belt um and i love the work you do because i agree that if you are gonna do plant medicine have a guide especially first time early times first time with a new medicine yeah. And I don't yes. mean a guide like the shaman. Yeah, yeah. I mean a guide that has all the, uh, that knows you, knows what you're yeah. dealing with, and has all the other skills like NLP and all that stuff to really, while you're under the medicine, they're more malleable. It's like, okay. Uh, let's yeah, yeah. We got, and they're Play Doh. Uh, yeah, they're Play Doh. <laughs> and, I've, and I've done that. And I've taken clients on journeys in that way. But always after, they've also experienced experience doing it without there's just some there's a there's a power there i feel to to know yourself and to know and and therefore to not be reliant on it so um yeah so that was that was my experience of saving myself four months i worked with him and he said mm -hmm. to me you're here for finishing touches you're different i'm like oh yeah mm -hmm. i have a lot of awareness i've been in this game for 10 years i'm ready to be done i'm ready to graduate <laughs> And on the other side of it, it was the first time that I experienced inner peace and freedom. I actually quit my job three months later and wanted to travel by myself. I wanted to just be with me. I didn't want to be with people. Yeah. And that feeling of freedom, I, I, I never knew before. Mm -hmm. And it was at that point that I'm like, I want this for people. Mm -hmm. This freedom... This hollowness that I used to feel in my chest, I don't feel anymore. It's now filled with my own love. I feel enough. I don't need to prove anything. I love being with people, but I could also enjoy my own company. Wow. This is amazing. Yeah. And so, yeah, it was about eight months later that I started my business. I started just wow. wanting to help people in that way and uh, never thought I'd be where I'm at today, which is certifying other coaches and healers in my method that was never <laughs> ever ever my vision or plan but god has a different plan for me and my clients that um, would say to me i want to learn from you i want to learn to do what you do and he's like i don't know how to teach what am i doing huh <laughs> and then before you hearing that i set an intention to really like map it out get clear on what is it and um yeah, it's been uh, it's been four years now that I've been running my my certification programs, and wow. uh, that that fulfills me the most to now yeah. see the people. Because as you know, this is an industry that's exploded since COVID. Mm -hmm. uh, beautiful to see how people want to um, help and coach and really care in that way, and have had their own transformation. I want others mm -hmm. to as well, uh, but there's definitely a lack of um of embodiment or or tools or method or experience for a lot yeah. so let me to fulfill that gap let me ask you this too what like two major questions what is somatic healing like what's your definition for somatic healing why is it important like because sometimes this feels like a vague concept for people that are newer to somatic healing so i'm curious how would you define yeah that? yeah so the way i define it is you know, your nervous system is always working for you. It's listening for safety or threat. And when it senses safety, it will metabolize whatever's there, it will learn it, and suddenly you, you know, you have more capacity for whatever that new thing was that you weren't scared to do, whether it's, you know, mom says, hey, help me cut these veggies and you're just like I'm using a knife for the first time okay I'm cutting I'm doing it okay great this isn't scary I could do this um or you know getting into sport for the first time but when it senses threat uh and and the reality is most of the time what we sense is threat is not real threat we're no longer being chased by lions yes uh it is just 
somewhere that we are scaring ourselves, that we have forgotten how to feel safe, it puts us into this protective bubble of fight, flight, freeze, or please. It says, okay, well, uh, I'm going to keep working for you. And you're telling me this is, I'm going to protect you from it. And so it puts you into this heightened state. And so what's happening with somatically is that we have forgotten how to feel our feelings. We've forgotten how to be self-included. We, you know, I had forgotten what it is to be in my body, to feel safe, to feel these sensations, to express these emotions. And I learned to intellectualize it or to stuff it down or to resist it or to run from it. And this is that protective bubble that we get stuck in. And so a lot of people don't even realize that they're constantly in the state. Some may call it, uh, well, I feel anxiety all the time. I'm like, uh, what are you running from? Anxiety is not the fuel. It's you running from feeling something. So to me, a sem the somatic work or understanding how to heal somatically is learning how to feel again. Yeah. And and how to feel is how to work with your nervous system because it's on board. It's like yeah. ready, just waiting for you. And so there's specific ways of doing that, of of having this relationship again with our nervous system from regulating our breath so we can actually feel safe to be in our body to then when something arises for you, tracking uh, where you feel that in your body and then naming those sensations because sensations are the language of the nervous system. Yeah. So when you're speaking sensations, you're basically opening the door to your nervous system and saying, yeah, this is safe. Come, come help me with this. Let's process and digest this. Uh, cause it's neutral, right? Sensations. It's not good, bad. It just is like, okay, I'm angry. Where do you feel it? In my chest. It's hot. It's tight. There's no judgment there. There's just is. And so right there, there's no judgment. There's acceptance. There's more safety. You're already working with the nervous system. Yeah. So I'm curious. So when you say sensations are the language of the nervous system, why do our, why do our wires get crossed with our nervous system and our sensations where we, like some people are like a walking head. I used to be kind of a walking head, just unaware of your body, unaware of what the channel, the communication channel that's happening. So, so how mm -hmm. do we kind of undo ourselves if we, or unlearn if our wires are completely crossed and we're disconnected from sensation? Yeah. Yeah. So it depends on like what your safety strategy is, right? There's a great book and I know you love reading books because mm -hmm. I listened to one of your recent podcasts, uh, called the five personality patterns by Steven Kessler. Have you read it? Uh, I have not. That's going to oh. be a new one. Uh, this has been a game changer. Like when I delved into this book four years ago and it's a huge part of, um, how I train my students in my mm -hmm. certification program to understand your, your personality patterns, your safety strategies I mean, that, that were formed out of a developmental need that wasn't met. And so in overwhelm, you have a primary pattern and a secondary pattern that kick in. Primary kicks in. If that one can't make you feel safe, secondary kicks in. And most people are operating in these personality patterns. I like to call them safety strategies always. And there's beautiful gifts to them all. So it's not like, oh, that's the one I have. It just, it is what it is. And as you learn to cultivate real safety, you come out of needing the pattern. Think of the pattern, the two patterns, kind of like your two bodyguards. And you're just like, okay, now I'm old enough. I don't need, I don't need babysitter. I don't need body anymore. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> so as you learn to cultivate safety in your system, uh, you'll come out of the pattern and, and tap more into the gifts of it. So I shared earlier in my story of feeling this hollowness in my chest and not being able to be with myself and always needing to be with people in order to feel better. And that's because my primary pattern is what's called the merging pattern. Mm -hmm. And the merging pattern is formed around age, anywhere between six months to age three 
when the developmental need of a of an infant of a child is nurturing, and if that nurturance wasn't there, whether it was emotionally or physically, like literally, mom did not give me enough milk. She had no idea yeah. that I was still hungry after all that bottle that she fed me. So. Uh, whatever it is, there was there was a lack of nurturance, or mom didn't know how to nurture herself, so she never learned how to nurture me, uh, and or didn't model that to me. So I don't know how to nurture myself, and so there's this this gap there. And the the statement when you read the book, the statement of those that run this pattern is there isn't enough. It's not enough. You're mm-hmm. born. So as I learned to feel safe and give myself what I needed, because each one of these patterns has something else that they need to heal in order to feel safe. So to answer your question of like the, the, the miswiring that's happened is because of whatever we learn. Like the other pattern that I have is the leading pattern, which happens anywhere from in utero to three months old, which is not feeling safe to come into this world, to occupy this body. Mm-hmm. Which is why I always lived in my head and being in my body, like complete, like dissociation. Really? Then there's the enduring pattern where people learn to just stuck down and just endure and hunker down and they could just hold on to their shit forever. Then there's the aggressive pattern, which is like, I'm all alone, me against the world. And you just feel alone and, that you, and, and you're angry and you have to fight for that you have to be in control but at the same time that when we do that it's exactly what has people not want to be around you so and then there's the rigid pattern which is i am my accomplishment and maybe it's formed because one that only celebrated you for what you did well so i'm trying to give a real quick synopsis on this here (laughs) um and i imagine my guess is that the rigid pattern is one of yours because the feeling is that they're so good at living in their head and solving problems and figuring it out and tackling that to-do list and accomplishing and being the best. Yeah. There's no heart connection. Yeah. They're, they're just rigid about it yeah. all. It's rules. There's the right way and the wrong way and stay in this box, stay in this lane, do this, do this yeah. way. Irrational and, and my wife would probably agree. <laughs> On that, yeah, that it, and that beautiful. is a little too stiff. Yeah, but beautiful gifts in those. So what's great is when you learn this a about yourself, and then about your loved ones, or if you're in, you know, if you're a coach yourself, it's going to change the game of how you work with your clients, mm-hmm. because you could have a great method, but if you're coaching every client the same way and you don't realize their, their safety strategy, you're, you're missing a huge opportunity. I mean, I know most of my sessions, I'm like, okay, well, until I work you out of both your safety strategies, mm-hmm. <laughs> healing is not really, we're not, we're going to, we're not going to tackle yet the thing that you came to me for. We have found a rely on that work those that you know it worked for me yeah. or so i thought to just merge with others it worked for me to just leave my body and then yeah. you hit that point where it doesn't work anymore and you start to want to heal truly heal but there's plenty of people that are healing and are still running it so it's i think it's the deepest you could go when you understand it yeah